Congenital heart conditions among infants remain a silent killer. Many don't survive due to a lack of financial resources and medical expertise. The Children's Cardiac Foundation of Africa aims to help ailing young patients through a unique partnership to reduce public backlog cases. Hers is a miracle story. At six months old, Rafilbe Sabia was diagnosed with a life-threatening heart condition. A normal average human being is born with two valves, one that carries deoxygenated blood and one that carries oxygenated blood. So mine it was one which was mixed blood basically. So I didn't have enough oxygenated blood going through my body. And that's when I started complicating shortness of breath, I was a bit purplish in colour and I think that's when my mom picked up that I was ill because the signs were there and she's a nurse so she knows some of these things. So that's basically I was born with it. It was only discovered a few days after I was born. Two operations were only possible through donations. 29 years later, Rufilwe keeps on giving back. Five years ago, she set up a non-profit company to help disadvantaged youngsters in the field of technology. Had I not been given that chance, I would not be able to help the lives that I'm helping now. And that's why I have such a great passion for transforming lives. It's because I know that I was helped by people who didn't even have to help. And so that's my mandate in life. That's my purpose in life. It's to inspire. It's to transform lives. Now an initiative from the veteran surgeon who operated on Rafilwe. After more than 15,000 open heart surgeries, the 78-year-old is not yet done. 300,000 children are born every year in Africa with a congenital heart defect. And to that you have to add all the children with rheumatic heart disease. So it's really it's in epidemic proportions. Now there's no way that um, any public or state facility can uh, help all these children. So we have uh, started a fairly unique uh, foundation. Now my dream and my hope is that every child no matter what his financial circumstances, no matter what the economic situation, will have access to pediatric cardiac surgery should it be required. The numbers on the continent are staggering. Of the, uh, the children with uh, cardiac disease in Africa, I don't think more than 1% are treated surgically. So that means that 99% of them do not survive. Now that is a, it's an almost an unthinkable situation. But that is in fact the case. And we urgently need to develop a public-private partnership. But with funding, hope for every little patient. The books say, the researchers say, she was going to die. So looking at her today, going towards her 30th birthday, it's just a wow. And a hearty endorsement from Rafilwe. Cardiac issues are not really dealt with extensively and I feel like a lot more can be done and I'm hoping that with this foundation and hopefully it you know gives birth to a lot of other foundations like itself. So far the foundation has managed to send a healthy and bouncy Ghanaian toddler back home. Chilean Palay, SABC News, Centurion. So one in 100 babies are born with a structural heart defect, making congenital heart, uh, making congenital heart disease or CHD a major problem, the most common birth defect in the world. Each year, an estimated 3,000 South African children die or remain disabled from their diagnosed and treatable CHD. We're now joined in the studio. You saw Refilus Bia. So in that clip, she's in studio with me and on Skype is Professor Robin Kinsley of the Children's Cardiac Foundation of Africa to tell us more about their work. He was also in that interview. A very warm welcome to you both. Professor Kinsley, perhaps let me just start with you. What is a CHD and who is most susceptible to it? A congenital heart defect is an abnormality or a structural abnormality of the heart. It's a birth defect. It's the commonest congenital defect um, that children develop or have. And um, the almost 300,000 children are born in Africa every year with a congenital heart defect. Uh, sadly, uh, very few of these are correct. Now, 
Pediatric cardiac surgery has uh, witnessed performance beyond prophecy, and virtually every single congenital heart defect can be corrected or at least very well palliated. So these children can live like Rafiwi. They can become absolutely normal. So not only can surgery save lives, but in addition to that, it transforms lives. These, these children become absolutely normal. So for me, it's, it's really quite unthinkable that so many children are not given this opportunity of becoming like Rafiwi. Rafiwi is, I think, a wonderful living example of what pediatric cardiac surgery can do. But Professor, just what are the most common cases of congenital heart disease and are there treatments that are common? Yes, most certainly. There, um, there are common defects such as a, a hole in the heart. Now, a simple hole in the heart is very easily correctable. Uh, the cost is not great. When one considers that the initial cost might be, say, 150, 200,000 rand, if it means 70 years of productive life, it really pales into insignificance. It is not a very expensive procedure considering that it saves a life and it also transforms a life so that these children, rather than uh, suffering, going back to hospital every other week or month at extreme cost with a simple operation can survive and they can do very well and live absolutely normal lives. Now, there are obviously far more complex anomalies. Not all of them are simple holes in the heart. But the fact remains that the, the more complex anomalies, we can, uh, and if we can't correct them, we can palliate these children very well indeed, mm. so that they can be pretty good. All right, Professor, while we hope that that line improves, let's chat to Rafilio now. Rafilio, what did... Your parents, we saw your mother there in that video, mm -hmm. know about congenital heart disease at the time or even the people around you. So my mom luckily is a nurse and she works in the pediatric ICU. So she knows quite a bit about such things, but she wasn't um, entirely enlightened about congenital heart diseases at the time. And so it was a frantic when they said, you know, we need an operation, there's no doctor around, you know, because um, especially in our community, you know, heart defects, you know, they're not so popular. Um, but luckily because she, she's in the medical fraternity, she was able to then, um, you know, speak to her colleagues and ask for help from people around associate hospitals who she was working with. And that's how really we got the help. And, and you had two operations. Tell us a little yes. bit more about that. So the first one, I was six months of age. Um, so I wouldn't remember much about that one. Um, but I had to do corrective surgery at the age of 14. Um, this was back in 2003. And um, around the second one was when I was then aware what was happening. Um, at the time, we didn't have the funds. Um, we didn't have the support, you know. And so um, that's when my family and I went out as well again to, you know, try and source help and, and find those resources we needed for the, for the second operation. Mm. Was there any stigma attached to it growing up? Definitely. Um, as a young girl, your friends are doing netball. Well, I did netball, but I wasn't allowed to do any other um, position but goalkeeper because you don't get to move much. So um, I wasn't allowed to, um, you know, participate in a lot of things growing up. And it was very hard for me to explain to my friends what was wrong with me because they're like, OK, you don't have a heart, so you have someone else's heart. There were a lot of, you know, um, where you have to explain yourself time and time again why there are certain things you can't um, get involved in. So there was a, a stigma and it's Essentially, even around our black community, because there isn't a lot of, um, you know, they don't, there isn't a lot of knowledge around um, such diseases. Mm. So, Professor, just to come back to you, what are the factors that you found on the African continent with regards to CHD, and how many people are affected by it? Well, it, you know, I don't think the incident is any greater in Africa. It's the same uh, all over the world. But if in the United States and Europe, uh, for example, every child with a congenital heart defect is treated and they grow up to become very normal individuals. So there's no, no special high incidence in Africa. It's just that in Africa, 
we have so many patients who are not treated. You know, to such an extent that uh, when I delivered a lecture in Turkey to the international group a few years ago, I entitled my lecture, Neonatal and Infant Cardiac Surgery in Africa, Continental Genocide. Uh, they were strong words, but it had a, an immediate impact on the world. Uh, they did a variety of things and they encouraged us to continue our work. But, you know, I remain committed to the ideal that every child uh, with a congenital heart defect should be should receive treatment if they're required. They can all end up like the field. And we have sportsmen, we have doctors, we have all sorts of uh, individuals who have recovered and whose lives have been transformed. They not only self-survived, but their lives have been transformed. And this is my dream. My dream is that one day will in fact be the case. And we need to start now. We need to do something about it. We need to develop foundations. We need to enter into public-private partnerships. Whatever is required to achieve that goal. And uh, I think through this foundation, uh, we might start the process. And Professor Kinsey, you say that on the continent, the, the problem is that acquired heart disease has been largely left to non-governmental organizations to help with the treatment. Yes, uh, you know, I think that, um, uh, as I said earlier, that it, um, congenital heart disease or the treatment of heart disease in children is just not a government priority. And one can understand that, but one must appreciate that um, the incidence of heart disease on the African continent is virtually the same as communicable diseases like HIV, TB, malaria, and one's not for one second minimizing the importance of treating these conditions. But congenital heart disease also needs attention, as does acquired rheumatic heart disease. Now, on the African continent, we also have rheumatic heart disease. You know, so rheumatic heart disease has virtually been eliminated in Western countries, but it's still very prevalent in the low-income countries like uh, exists in Africa. Now, all these children can be corrected, and they can live a pretty normal life, but uh, sadly, that's not the case. Rufila, what, if at all, did people learn being around you because you had CHD? And... Has it given you an opportunity to go out there and teach people about it? Um, it definitely has, and especially um, since me being um, grown and being an adult and having platforms to speak about such things, um, it has given me a great appreciation for such diseases that are not um, necessarily given attention to. And people are not still very enlightened about congenital heart diseases, um, but um, hopefully... Um, we grow in that aspect and you know more and more people get to know what this is about and how to even help because that's the biggest thing it's not just knowing but how can we help because normal citizens can help um, we need resources that's the biggest problem and the biggest issue we have and trained personnel so with you know people knowing what this issue is um, I think then we can really you know we have we can forge forward successfully are there particularly platforms that you have where people can either donate or as you say the lack of expertise where uh, these person that can be recruited or accessed. So that's where the foundation um, that Rob Kinsley started not so long ago. Um, that's where people can help and actually chip in. It's called um, the Children's Cardiac Foundation in Africa. So um, tccfa.com. So people can then go onto the website and you know you can actually donate money or just find out how to spread the word further. Mm. And. Uh, just Professor Kingsley, are there common traits and experiences for survivors of CHD without surgical intervention? Um, without surgical intervention, all that happens is they get repeated admissions to hospital, uh, often to the intensive care unit, and it's very costly. It would be far cheaper, in fact, to operate on these children rather than having repeated admissions until, of course, they pass away. So, you know, that's why I think that uh, the treatment of uh, congenital heart disease is so cost-effective and it literally uh, it transforms lives and saves lives. So we spoke about the, uh, the lack of finances and expertise, but if effective treatment is possible, why is it unavailable outside of these factors? Well, you know, the, the problem is so massive. And it's very costly when one thinks of the initial treatment. 
But when one considers what it achieves over a lifetime, it really pales into insignificance. And I think we have to look beyond the initial cost. The initial cost is really insignificant considering what it does in a lifetime. It saves a life and makes these children live pretty normal lives. So that's why I'm a great advocate for uh, increased services for the treatment of congenital heart disease. Uh, I think that a public-private partnership is essential. As our president said, we must lend a hand. Uh, the private sector has uh, excess capacity or increased capacity, and they can perform these operations at uh, perhaps a lower cost. And uh, I think uh, just for this sort of uh, commitment to the treatment of congenital heart disease, we can achieve a great deal. Okay. We obviously can't be the whole of Africa. So that's why I think we need to train doctors, train doctors as well as treat patients from Africa. Is that part of your 2021 targets? Absolutely, absolutely, no doubt. Professor will give you an opportunity to answer that. Thank you very much, Professor Robin Kinsley. And uh, just to, to end off here with Rufula, so you mentioned earlier on growing up what some of the prohibitive impacts or, or rather, you know, results of your having CHD were. Now as a grown-up person, are there things that you can't do? Has it impacted your quality of life? Um, in a positive way, yes. Um, I lead a very normal life. The only, say, abnormal thing I do is go for a cardiac, um, you know, assessment every year, just to make sure that everything's still working fine. But I've been, um, I've been given the green light to do any activity. I go to gym. I do any other thing that any normal adult my age is doing. So, I'd say that it has really, really, really impacted my life in a great way, and not just me, my parents, and our community, because um, this is not just helping me. By me being saved, I'm able to help many, many thousands others. You know? And are you consciously more health conscious because of um, having been through that and, you have to and encouraging be. those around you to do the same? <laughs> you have to be. There are certain things I'm not allowed to have, like coffee, caffeine, but now and again I have it because, co- I mean, <laughs> how do we survive? <laughs> but, I mean, just general overall health, making sure you eat healthy, making sure you go to the gym regularly, making sure you drink your water and those kind of things. Obviously, that doesn't prevent congenital heart disease. In my case, I was born with it. But it does help to keep the risk down of me having to go back into surgery. So you can't be partaking in the spatlas and, in, spatlas and any of those things? I mean, you can. <laughs> <laughs> so you do dip, no, dip I, I, I live a very normal life. Mm. Very normal normal life that's why I say you know it's really impacted my life in a very positive way so I lead a normal life but I but I obviously have to be very conscious about the decisions I make on a day-to-day basis thank you so much for sharing your story with us Rufiro Esbia who had an open heart surgery at the age of six months she said at 14 and on Skype earlier on Professor Robin Kinsley of the Children's Cardiac Foundation of Africa we're going to take a quick break we'll be back shortly